I see it coming and I, I don't just only see it coming. I see it flying closer, flying. She understand? The agitation of Biafra that started for, uh, for let's say, uh, 53 years now is excelling. In fact, it has excelled. See, the actualization date that was fixed, that is fixed this December, is not only sacrosanct, but very, very holy. Yes. It is only Nande Kano is our true leader. Leader of Biafra now, after Juku's death. Nande Kano submitted himself. A sacrificial lamp. Are you listening to me? Someone started it. Someone will do what? Sacrifice himself. Nande Kano is a sacrifice a sacrificial lamp of the Biafrans. Biafran nation is rare. And the emancipation of Biafra is coming this December irreversible. Nobody could stop it. Nobody can do that. See, Eba has taken it upon himself and is working hard in Finland since incarceration of Nande Kano in 2020. When he was renditioned from illegally Nairobi airport to Nigeria here. Somebody like uh, Lai Mohammed that has been telling lie right from the womb, his mother's womb, started lying and lying against him. And there was no lie. Lai Mohammed did not tell the whole world how Nandekanu was arrested with the inter, uh, uh, inter, 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 inter one of Interpol's, by Interpol's uh, whatever, big, big grammar. He was arrested in uh, Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, blah, blah, blah. Letter, letter. The way Nande Kanu was arrested or, and renditioned from Nairobi resurfaced. Everybody saw the truth. It was illegal. Nigerian nation is a kidnapping country, kidnapper. That's why the bandits have been kidnapping in the north. Nobody's doing anything about it. Buhari kidnapped, killed and killed many people on the highway, employing Asad Dokubo and other forces that are working for him. He employed Uhuru Kaeta, Uhuru of Kenya. To do what? The same kind of kidnapping in Nairobi. Nandi Kanu was renditioned illegally from Nairobi to Nigeria. And court has ruled in his own gain in favor of Nandi Kanu. That Nandi Kanu did nothing. So what we know is that Nigeria is for Aousa, Nigeria is for Fulani, Nigeria is for Yoruba. And they have played out now. Because Tinubu, if after releasing Sondi Gbowo and release that young man, everybody would have applauded him. He released only Sunday Gbowo. He left Nande Kanu because Tinubu is a highly tribalized man. If he is not, he would have to allow somebody that caught free to walk out free out of DSS facilities. But he's still there. So emancipation of Biafra is a compulsory thing. We are not refraining. We are not backing down. We are working hard towards that date to make sure that Guattares, United Nations Secretary General, has made it, you know, a big point. Listen and listen good of honor to make sure that Biafra emancipation date is sacrosanct. It is irreversible. But, but, you, but, but do you not think before that, um, before that date, the government might, um, might have might extradite um, Ekpab down here to Nigeria. Do you know? So, um, are you not seeing something like that um, occurring? Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> see, let me tell you. Finland, you see, is almost part of former USSR. They have border. Finland is almost part of Russia. Only that, that is the most advanced country in Europe. They gave Russia the fight of their life. That's why Finland is still remain a sovereign state nation. On but, but some 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 say no way. Listen and listen good. Finland, listen and listen good. Can never ever dance to Nigerians' requests, customs. Like, like Nigeria as a corrupt country, a kidnapping country, underdeveloped country, can never tell Finland what to do. If Nigeria tries it, send the any military forces to arrest Simon Elba in Finland. Those forces, those agents, we go live jail. See, so, Finland is not a dose state. No, Finland, Plateau state. See, 
Finland is not Benue State. Finland can never ever be. They are the most, when I say advanced country, I mean developed country of Europe. See, let me chalk you. You can never see anybody from Finland in UK, that's London, working, or in America, working. They are more advanced than the United Kingdom. They are not hungry. At all. Finland can never reach on Simon Epa. No, now. Finland is not uh, Cairo, uh, Nairobi. That's Kenya. Uhuru Kayeta, almost monkey. You can't compare him to Finland, Fin Prime Minister or President, whoever is ruling over there. These people are well educated, well organized. They follow rules of law. They know the international law. Any Nigerian agent that tries it, even British MI5, M15, tries it in Finland. Top down Simon Epa. Oh my God. Their graves, their graves will be scattered all over Finland. Okay, nobody's renditioning or extraditing. Simon Epa from Finland. They can never ever do that. See, Nigeria excesses. That Nigeria get money, they get oil. That Tinubu, Tinubu is uh, this, is that. It is only mouth. Nigeria too, they run their mouth. Look at an African giant. Everybody is hungry. Nothing is working here. Only Alessoti just took it upon himself and changed the Abia state the other day, which is a big shame. On federal government. I don't want to talk about other states. Ordinary governor, yes, change the Abia, Abenyumba city. The whole Abia said they're having 24 hours light. Only a governor, barely how many months in office, has chalked the whole world. Haven't you had what Antonio Guterres, United Nations General, uh, Secretary General, the former Portuguese Prime Minister, said about Alexoti to the greatest shock of my life. So Nigeria, we go and tell uh, no. Finland is not a gossiper country now. Finland no be cho 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 cho. No, no eye service in Finland. Nigeria can never do it. It is impossible to rendition ever the way they rendition Nandi Kano at Nairobi, Kenya. I felt bad about Nandi. I wonder what Nandi went to do in Cairo, in Nairobi, without serious security. Serious bodyguard. It would have escalated into bloody clutch on that airport. And we are we, Biafra would have chucked Kenya. I don't know. I don't know. Had it been Nandi Kanu still out? Not that they arrested Nandi by now. Would have made great, great change in Biafra land. We know the level would have been in this Biafra station. Oh, sorry, despite the security, um, even though he had gone with security to Nairobi. I think they, would, they would, um, the, I think the, I think Nigeria they were determined to see you know um, get out of him. I think they would have still caught him, despite even um, Namdekan who go in security to Nairobi. Uh, they would have caught him. I know. You know, uh, he didn't walk a go alone. But the reason why, see how they caught Namdekan. They said you're under arrest, and people attention was on them. You know what happened? They chat terrorists. They said he's a terrorist. They started chatting terrorists. Everybody kill ya. That was how he was arrested. They bundled him into the, into one of the underground facilities there and bullied him. Are you listening to me? And they arrested him and brought him to Nigeria. So the way they did it, they acted fib at Nairobi Airport, Kenya. But I'm telling you, it can never be like that with Simon Epa. Nigeria has no strength. Internationally, Nigeria has no say. Nigeria is only, only relying on oil from southern Nigeria here. Minus that oil, nothing is going. Most of them are illiterate, ruling Nigeria. Look at the current president. He has no certificate. He lied and lied and lied and lied. The whole Massachusetts, uh, Chicago, sorry. They went there on investigation. Oh my God. Nigeria is a shameless country. Very shameless. Internationally, the narrative of this country has finished the image of this country. We have had bad, the worst narrative ever in history of Africa. Tinubu administration is the worst administration ever. Tinubu and the, uh, the like of Buhari, 
they are finished in Nigeria. Look at Nigeria now. Nigeria is just a limping skeleton. Nothing. There's nothing here. Our economy is zero. A borrowing nation. A nation that cannot manufacture pin will never grow. Always borrowing. A sorrowing. He that goes a borrowing goes a sorrowing. It's an adage. Nigeria is always borrowing. Land, because be a lender country now, when you produce as a production country, you will be lending out to nations. But today, we are a beggar country. Just imagine Ukraine. Ukraine shifted tons and tons of what grain to Nigeria. Have you heard anything about it? Uh -huh, that's Nigeria for you. It is in the Wamako warehouse. They hide everything there. That young man think, thought it, he, he, he did good to us, Abi. Where is the grain? Where is the wheat? Where is it now? He don't die down. You know, say this kind of country where you are. Every day, another story. Hey, focus on red. Tomorrow, they will focus on red. Tomorrow, hey, go for yellow. Everybody will forget red and go after yellow. Where are those grain from Ukraine? Forgotten. That's Nigeria for you. Nigerians are the most gullible people on earth. I'm sorry for them. It's really happening as an Igbo man. Do you, do you think it can, it can happen? Yes, as a Biafran Igbo. I am a Biafran Igbo. We have a Ijo Igbo. We have Urobo Igbo. We have Ishekri Igbo. All are Igbos. All are Biafrans. That's the fact. Abiafra has been declared by Ojuku in 1967. Ojuku did not go and declare Biafra himself. There was a consultation before Biafra was finally declared. There was a consultation. Go and quote what I'm saying. The Ojuku did not come out and say Biafra. There was a consultation. The Eastern Union elders were consulted as at that time. It was on that consultation that one, uh, one man, Opu, if I can remember his name, from Bayesa State, now suggested that the newest country as at that time in Africa should be called Biafra. I'm talking about consultation. Anybody that is saying December 22 that Biafran referendum or whatever or Biafran will be declared, are they declaring Biafra again or restoration of Biafra? Are they declared? And no, see, we are not doubt. We are trying to make things very clearly to people, not at that level because they are not the one. We are talking of people who want to see the signposts there. So as long as it's Biafra, they are running towards that direction. They don't know what that signpost. They cannot be able to interpret it. We don't want Biafrans to be deceived. In every 80 million Biafrans around the world, the consciousness, the bottom line, the flag is Biafra. How Biafra is going to come is left for the intellectuals and the professionals who are experts in playing at the international level to peacefully, like what Mohammed Gandhi did in India, bring back or restore the pride of Africa as a kingdom. Biafra is a kingdom. Biafra was first named a kingdom before the Portuguese stole that name and named it when a percentage of the first uh, uh, um, uh, citizens of that kingdom on earth migrated from where they are then to a place called the Gulf of Guinea. They share boundary with the Ethiopians. You know that nobody colonized the Ethiopians. Today, as at that time, they call that particular territory clan Biafra. 
the Portuguese named that, not even South, South uh, West Africa. It was named first, and, and the name was given first, proclaimed first, became popular. 15th century, when the Portuguese named that territory around Ethiopia, current Ethiopia now, as Biafra. And that water that shared the Gulf of Guinea and the ancient Ethiopian miners called Biafrans is what led to the bites we are talking about today down to West Africa, Nigeria and thereabout. So what I'm saying is there was consultation. Ojuku did not stand up and talk about Biafra. There was consultation. And in that consultation, professional different ideas came. And that was how everybody embraced. It is the spirit of divinity that was working. And everybody embraced that name. And when they embraced that name, today, and there was a ceasefire after the war. Then, somebody should not be talking about declaring its restoration. Then how is the restoration going to come about? If you have what it takes militarily. Listen, you know, we need to understand our territorial waters, our airspace. How many nautical miles from the Pacific, from the ocean? Our boundary. Who and who? Because a lot of Biafran nationalists are talking about expansion. And somebody saying 22nd, bro, where is it done anywhere in the world? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't want to add to that. And I'm not having any reservation. Is, is that the statement coming from the IPOB that on the 22nd of this year, December, Biafra will be declared or restored? Please go back and do your research very well, Mr. Anko. Get me facts. But then notwithstanding, I have my reservation over that. And I will continue to have my reservation over that. Because we don't want to be deceived. We don't want our people to be deceived. Whatever we are telling you, let it be it is coming from the conviction of reality. Not the conviction of what it looks like or what that is being written on somebody's face. My brother, let me tell you, the word Biafra is an appearance. It might not be reality. The reality is in Biafra. So anybody that is carrying this particular face, because of the love of what people have for the nation, for the kingdom itself, and that's why that anywhere there's anybody is talking about Biafra, people key in. But how it's going to work, there might not be a no. So we don't want to deceive those people. It took Israel over 4,000 years before they became a nation in 1948. I'm not saying that it's going to take Biafra all this, this long. No. But we want to stand to defend the black nation, the black continent, the black kingdom. And that is what Biafra is all about. If by today, Nam the Kelo comes out and we're able to secure our airspace and our territorial waters convincingly, get the concept of other nationalists in Biafra, then we agree to go. Nobody should come and impose a particular date. When we know that, no. I'm not speaking for political leaders of Biafra extraction who are in Nigeria. I'm not speaking for them. I am speaking for those components that made up the Biafra agitation to think beyond the understanding of a common man. Let us make Biafra a global and international nation. We are
blacks, even black Americans, blacks anywhere you are, any responsible of the country of origin can be proud of. That's what we are talking about. And until that is being done, when there was, there, there's going to be, you know, overwhelming consensus. Not only from the beer friends themselves, from the international community. That's, that's when we would talk about a date that is realistic for the restoration. That's my perception to that. For you and for anyone, I am not against any form of agitation, but I am against where a fake becomes a reality. Who we'll question it? Because we don't want to leave a legacy like the one we have in Nigeria. No, it's going to be quite different. So it should be thoroughly done by people who understand what it takes at this point in time. If we have to do that, IPOB has to be involved. People, their friends in diaspora has to be involved. The international community has to be involved. The United Nations has to be involved. The Air Corps has to be involved. The AU has to be involved. Because we are talking about security at the end of the day. Then, if they don't want to involve those people, they should be ready to arm themselves to defend it by force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That we should be talking about having the most sophisticated weapon. To defend our forceful restoration of Biafra. To stand against powers who might say that no, it cannot stand. That was when we would talk about, say, on Susan Sude and Susan Sude. Now you declare Biafra now? Togo, Chad, Nigeria, Yoruba, Aousa, Ghana, all of them will gang up against Biafra. How are we going to look like? The boys will die again. We don't want that to repeat ourselves. Listen from my own perspective, we don't want that again. We have to build capacity to the extent that we know we can stop any incursion, military incursion, invasion on Biafra land. We, we tell, we know who is right and who is wrong. But for me, for me, I am a Biafranist and undiluted because I discovered this, the, the, the connection of the consciousness of the black man that need to be unveiled to the world. And for you to unveil that consciousness to the world, in terms of everything, IT, discovering the black man again, a black man need to have a nation that is more dead after a nation like Biafra. And that's the way to Thanks for watching. Bye.